<laughs> All right, so now uh, I can see it in your eyes. You're dying to do some calculations. Uh, we're not going to do some Marini's uh, calculations here, uh, but we are going to do some integrated rate law equations, All right. um, which give us the ability to calculate um, you know, how fast the reaction, reactant will be consumed, or how much will be left after a certain period of time, or how much time would it take for me to make so much product, okay? <laughs> and um, what it does is we do have to integrate uh, the rate law, that's why it's called the integrated rate law, because assuming a first order reactant, okay, all right, which what we're gonna do, we're using integrated rate law for first order reactant, um, how, how does the concentration impact the rate? for a first order reaction. So what's the relationship between concentration and rate for a first order reaction? That's what I'm trying to ask. I didn't say, ask it very well. Is that the inverse proportional? Are the inverse proportional? The inverse directly proportional. Directly proportional. So that was the n equals one straight line. So rate doubles if concentration doubles. Rate triples if concentration triples. Rate quadruples if concentration quadruples. Should we do that again? No. I, apologize. I apologize for doing this first time. <laughs> All right. So, five. Okay, so concentration rate directly proportional for a first order reactant. All right. But as a function of time, what happens to the concentration of reactants? They go down, right? That's why we had to put a negative for the rate of average rate of reaction. Okay? So you start out with so much reactants. They start reacting, their concentration goes down as a function of time, products go up. Remember that fun stuff? Okay, so that impacts the rate. So as the rate, with the concentration of the uh, reactants goes down, the rate also goes down. So the rate is constantly changing during a reaction, okay? And so it's dependent on what time they're occurring. <coughs> so to get to this equation, what we do is let's take our rate law and equals k times a to the first power. So we're using first order. And again, we're using a as a reactant, not frequency factor. So a goes to products. Who's listening to my laptop? Okay. All right, so how we um, integrate this, okay, so those of you uh, taking calculus or will take calculus is an actual use of the integral. Okay, it's not just made up stuff. Okay, so what we do is we integrate the rate from t equals zero to t. So initial time to whatever time we're talking about. And we integrate the concentration from the initial concentration, so a sub zero so that's my initial concentration, or concentration at time equals zero, to my concentration at time t. And when we do that, we get an equation that looks like this. Okay. The natural log of a at time t equals negative k t plus the natural log of the initial concentration a sub zero. So that's our equation. That's how it's written on your equation sheet. So we do have to just recognize what all of these variables are. So A sub T, that's going to be my concentration of A at T, at whatever time you're talking about. T equals 60 seconds. T equals 3 hours. T equals 4.2 million years. It could be that long. Okay. K, what's K? Rate constant. So that's the rate constant cell. That's no different. Okay. 
What's T? Time. And then A sub zero is my initial concentration of A. And again, A is just a reactant, whatever one of the reactants are. So uh, basically, we've got three variables then. We've got rate constant, but we can, we can determine rate constant um, separately. We know how to determine rate constant. Uh, what we'll use this equation for primarily is to calculate either concentration of time T, initial concentration, well, yeah, I guess we could, initial concentration, or uh, time. Okay. So um, you could ask yourself uh, questions like this. Okay, let's say I start out with so much A. I know I want to run this reaction to make so much product, so A's concentration would be something else. How long do I have to let this reaction go? So it might be solving for time. Okay? Or um, we use this in nuclear chemistry quite a bit too, um, and has applications for you know, dating materials or um, medical purposes. Okay? So say you're giving uh, uh, you know, some patient some radioactive isotope. Okay, from like nuclear medicine, okay? And so you might give a patient so much initially, okay? You might want to calculate how much is left of that drug after two days or a week, okay? And again, we'll use this in nuclear chemistry uh, for, uh, you know, uh, dating materials, like figuring out how old stuff was, okay? Because when I was like eight years old, I was going to find a T-Rex in my backyard. Okay, and so when I was going to find that T-Rex, okay, I would have to figure out how old it is. Okay, how do we figure out, figure out how old T-Rex bones are? Okay, well, we know how much radioactive isotopes are present in living materials, so we know how much initially there, and then you can figure out how much was in a material that is not living anymore, like a bone or something like that, and then you can figure out how much time has passed. So that's how you can figure out how old the T-Rex bone that you dug up in your backyard. But I didn't find T-Rex in the backyard. Okay. I didn't know that then, but uh, Tyrannosaurus rex was only uh, lived in the uh, northwest region of the United States and Canada. I grew up in Pennsylvania, so I had no shot <laughs> at finding a T-Rex. I did find a dead bird. Did I ever tell you that? <laughs> okay. So apparently, when I was younger, I don't remember, we had a pet bird, Okay, and it died. Okay, it's a, it's a pet, they die, it's life, okay, we gotta get over it. Okay, so we had a, a funeral in my backyard, and we buried the bird in a Tupperware container, had a ceremony, I don't remember, I was pretty young, okay? Fast forward like five years, I forgot all about this, I'm digging for my T-Rex, I find a Tupperware container. I'm like, sweet, what is this? Ah, it's a dead bird. All right, then I hear the story about the funeral, I'm like, oh, okay. All right, so new equation. Can we, do we have enough time to use it? Yes. 